if you watch any television at all, you've certainly seen one of these things. It's a channel ID logo, or it's sometimes even called a channel bug. Now, what we want to do in this little project is we want to create the classy version of this, which is a semi-transparent, glassy-looking version, which is not quite as ugly or obscuring the view for the television viewer. This is basically a watermarking technique and you can use this in any other Photoshop project that does require a watermark. So we take the existing background layer which is just a vector graphic with a color fill and we're going to be applying a layer style to it which will be the bevel and emboss effect and we're then going to be changing the color of this to a basic white and then fooling around with its fill opacity. So to get started we'll go to the bottom of our layer palette and go to the styles button and we'll add bevel and emboss. Now I'll just drag this over so we can see all the bevel and emboss options here. The settings that I'm going to change, I'm not really going to mess around with this very much at all. Uh, you can play with this yourself and fine tune to your own taste, but there are a couple of rules. If this is being used for video, not just as a watermark, but as a video watermark, make sure in the soften slider you give it at least one or two pixels for softness, otherwise you'll get this nasty flickering interlace effect on the screen which you want to avoid at all costs. You can play with up or down depending on which direction you want the shadow to come from, I'm just happy to stick with the up. The shading, one option you should turn on is the anti-alias option just to help the shadows smooth a little bit more, just again to avoid that interlace flicker effect. And for me, well that's it. As I said, anything extra you want to put on yourself, have a party, knock yourself out, but I'm happy with these settings, and I'll say OK. OK, next thing is the J. I actually don't want the J to be visible in this way. I'd like to create a nice cutout effect on the rectangular layer. Now, to do this, I'll need to take a selection of the J layer. So I'll do a Control t that's a Control click on the T symbol for the J layer to get a transparency selection based on the layer's transparency. Now I'm going to be applying an, a layer mask onto the rectangular layer, but before I do that I actually need to invert that selection, otherwise I'm going to get the exact opposite of what I need. So I'll just uh, do it via the menu, go to Select and we'll invert the selection by choosing Inverse. OK, and now I'll add my layer mask by clicking on the Add Layer Mask button at the bottom of the layer palette with my rectangular object layer active. There we go, and we get a nice little cutout effect. I'll take it one step further. I'll turn off the text layer for J. Ah, now we can see all the way through. So that's done. Next thing we want to do is the TV text. I need to change colour for this and I also need to set some bevel and emboss effects. Now changing the colour is a neat little trick you can do here. If you've got white or black in the default settings for your toolbox, I'll just switch this back to black. Double click on the T icon for the TV layer to mark it and then swap colours back to white bang and you immediately get white as a fill. So that's just worth knowing if you've never done that before. I'll just click off and we've got white. Okay, reactivate the TV layer and we'll place on our layer style for bevel and emboss. So I'll click on the layer style button, go to bevel and emboss. And I'm happy with most of these settings except for a couple of little changes. Again, like before, add some soften. I'll give it two pixels. I will reduce the size down to three just so it's not quite as dramatically defined as the rectangular background. Turn on the anti-alias for the shadows to improve the smoothing. And again for me, well, that's it. Say OK. Hmm, it's starting to look pretty good. Now we come to the part where it really starts to change in its appearance. And I go to the rectangular layer and I need to, before I'm going to get this to look transparent, I need to change its colour from orange. So I'll double click on its colour thumbnail. And I'm going to take the colour picker's luminosity slider and pull it all the way down so it's just grayscale. And I've now got white. So I'll say OK. And from there, we now do the thing that you may have never done before. We go to the 
fill opacity option not the layer opacity but the fill opacity what this does is when you drag it down it takes away the actual color fill but it retains all the shadows and effects from the bevel and emboss or any other effects for that matter uh, this is a very neat effect if you want to create a completely transparent object but with shadows and with highlights now I would like to retain some of the fill so I'll set this to about 30 percent somewhere around there that'll do and that's looking pretty good I'll go to the TV text layer same thing I'll reduce its fill opacity take that down to about oh, let's say a little bit less transparent a little bit more opaque set that to about 50 percent and that's looking pretty good too now if you want to reduce the opacity of shadows well you can do that either via the settings for the layer style or you could simply just go straight into the opacity for the layer itself the master opacity and by pulling that down you'll reduce opacity further for both the shadows and for the fill so if I want to reduce the shadows a little bit well, I'll pull it down a little bit there then I'll go back to the fill opacity and I'll just increase it to bring it back up to the level I wanted so you've got quite a bit of freedom to create quite a nice little effect so let's see how are we looking are we happy with this so far? I think this is looking pretty good. But uh, what I'd like to do now is to take all of these different elements that I've used to make up my logo and I'd like to group them together so they'll sit in a little folder symbol. It makes it easier for moving things around and playing with opacity. So I'll group them together by using Control. If you're using the Mac, you're using Command to select these different layers and we'll then group them together I'll just drag this across so you can see the fly out menu here just click on the fly out menu and it's a new group from layers so any selected layers will be grouped together which I'll call logo group terrible spelling as always but there we go say OK and it's all now grouped together as a layer group that means I only need to select the logo icon and I can then move the entire thing around now before we would export this to your video editing program you would naturally place the image in the correct position that it would be used before it would be ready and I've used a test background layer, a temporary background layer to be able to see the actual logo so I would at the very least turn it off more likely I would actually throw the thing away completely just throw it into the bin and then save it and it will be ready to go of course always remember when you create these things check that the pixel aspect ratios for the original image has been set to PAL if you're in Europe or to NTC, NTSC if you're in the United States so that you don't get your logo squeezed and messed up and that's it happy logo making